You can't deny that Sean O'Malley is one of the best fighters right now, but even he had to go through some serious challenges to get to that point. O'Malley made sure fights such as the one against Shane Sargent were something you'd never forget. And though his victory came from such a smaller event, at least when compared to some of the others on this list, it's still an incredible win for him. The fight occurred on the 3rd of July in 2015 at the ICF Small Town Throwdown, where he was up against none other than Shane Sargent. This was his second fight in under four months in the professional ranks, but it still felt like he had spent years practicing. While the first minute of the fight may have looked like things were going to play out for a while and you might get to see a few more rounds, as soon as the clock hit 2.03, the fighter straight up knocked his opponent out with a devastating punch. O'Malley remained undefeated, but Sargent, on the other hand, ended up with a record of 12 losses. If you're talking about his earlier fights, you can't forget the one against Tyson Lin. Considering this was his last fight in the ICF, the fifth in his entire career, you can't ignore it, making it super important for him to end up in the top 10 no matter what. The fight took place on the 21st of October in 2016. The fighter had still managed to stay undefeated, but Lin was a much tougher opponent than anyone he had ever fought. This time, the fighter took his sweet time by observing his opponent in the first round, but the second round saw things spice up. O'Malley then suddenly hit his opponent with a huge head kick and won the round, continuing his undefeated streak at 2 minutes and 57 seconds of round 2, while his opponent added another loss to a bunch of losses he'd already suffered. But I mean, if you're going to talk about this last fight in the ICF, you have to talk about his first fight there against Josh Reyes. Why is it important to take a look at it? Well, even though the fight was in a small promotion and only a few people watched it, it started his career with a bang. This is O'Malley's first fight and knockout in his pro career. It occurred on the 6th of March in 2015 at Intense Fighting 17. The then newbie made super quick work of his opponent without breaking a sweat. In fact, all it took him was one round to completely destroy destroy his opponent with some TKO punches at the 1 minute and 33 second mark. While it was an incredible moment for the fighter, his opponent, on the other hand, had a rough time and it was his last fight, leading to a record with no wins and one loss. If you're going to talk about important knockouts in the player's early career, you of course have to mention Alfred Kashakin. There are a bunch of fighters out there who've made their way into the UFC through their fights in the DWCS. Some of the biggest names to pull this off have been Jamal Hill, Corey McKenna, and even Greg Hardy. Who knew that O'Malley would join that list. The fight occurred on the 18th of July in 2017 with none other than Snoop Dogg commentating. I mean, it's pretty safe to say that this fight was the most important one for the fighter up to that point. Once again, this proved to be a piece of cake with a UFC contract waiting for him as he knocked his opponent out without breaking a sweat in the 4 minute and 14 second mark of the first round, with of course Snoop Dogg losing his mind in the best way commentating. But did you know that the fighter fought in the LFA once against David Nuzzo? Why am I mentioning this? Well, that's the only time he fought in that promotion, but also the fight that got him noticed by Dana White for the DWCS. This one was on the 5th of May in 2017. Of course, in typical O'Malley fashion, he took his opponent out with a knockout in the first round. Nuzzo never knew what hit him and was busy shifting back to the cage wall, trying to gather his bearings while the fighter threw an incredible spinning head kick and knocked him out. With his official start in the UFC, you've got to talk about his fight against Raleigh and Paiva. It was a truly exciting fight where O'Malley kept hitting his opponent with a bunch of lefts and rights, and none of them missed the mark. Paiva couldn't hold his own, leading to one of the most terrifying left hooks. It was so bad that the referee had to step in to stop the fighter and end the fight with another win for O'Malley in the first round and another step to the top of the bantamweight ranks. If you think that's brutal, I've got some fights that show how brutal he is in the UFC, such as the fight against Thomas Almeida. This one took place between the pandemic back in 2021. The match went on despite that in an empty stadium. O'Malley outdid himself in this one, coming to the octagon better than ever. His opponent fell to his feet because of his incredible feints and footwork, but he was still able to hold on until the third round. But things took a drastic turn, with Almeida laying on the ground and O'Malley casually walking over to him and then throwing a destructive right hand right to his face, ending up in a knockout. Terrifying stuff, if you ask me, but there's one that's even more visually appealing. Of course, I'm talking about the fight against Jose Alberto Quinones. Not only was this an amazing knockout to witness, but it was one of the most important fights in the fighter's career in his early days in the UFC. 
Though this one is a TKO, most people consider it a KO. Not just that, but this time the fighter was up against an opponent way ahead of him and anyone he had fought at the time. Though that meant nothing to him in the ring, and despite this being his second fight on the UFC pay-per-view card, he still demolished his opponent in the first round. On the other hand, remember his knockout against Kashakin in the DWCS? Well, his fight against Eddie Wineland was like that, other than the fact that it was much, much louder. This one took place during the pandemic as well at UFC 250 and featured a straight right from O'Malley, resulting in a knockout that was easily one of the best highlights of the evening. Something that you'll never be able to forget was how the fighter walked off after that knockout. It was straight up cold, making him more terrifying than ever before. And I cannot end this list without discussing his fight against Chris Matino. The fighter got a win on the biggest stage out there, and while it certainly isn't the prettiest fight, it made his career truly explode. The UFC pay-per-view was headlined by none other than Conor McGregor himself, someone fans and critics had started comparing to O'Malley. The referee had to step in between the two in the third round since O'Malley was dominating his opponent, and Matino just couldn't handle how fast he was. Those are the best knockouts and TKOs by Sean O'Malley, and we'll see you in the next video.